Hello wine lovers, Trophy Wine Hunter. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm really happy to bring you another review of a first growth wine. And again, every time I get to drink a first growth wine, it is a real blessing. This is the Chateau Aubryon 2011. So let me give you some background to this tasting and this review. The reason I drank an Aubryon, I don't just do this every day, is that I was had the honor and pleasure to meet um, Morgan Renault, who is the area manager for North America for the Clarence Dillon wines. She brought in some wines um, for us to taste at a lunch and a dinner. And one of them was the 2014. And I had the pleasure of then having a subsequent meal with her where we tasted 2011. So I thought it was really opportune for me to be able to taste with her since she you know she represents the winery she's probably had a ton of opion and just to kind of get her thoughts on it so i that's why i opened it and um she's a lovely person i think she's w set like three or four or whatever very very knowledgeable in terms of her wines and so and in particular, obviously, Obreon. For those of you who follow my wine channel, you'll know that this was one of the bottles that I bought at the BC Liquor Stores. There was a huge sale um, at the Richmond Brick House branch um, where they put the, um, the Obreons on sale for, I think, 30%. It was like $1,000 um, reduced to $700. So I was fortunate enough to be there at the right time and picked it up. And so um, I thought it was a great deal. Um, so let's describe it a little bit. I have done a previous video on Aubryon, so you can refer to that video and I'll put it at the end of this video for a little bit more history of Aubryon. But 2011 was considered a pretty good year. Um, not the best years as compared to 2009 and 2010, but there could be, a, there are some uh, weaker years. So I would say it'd be on par with maybe 2014 and 2012, maybe 2013 was a slightly weaker. Um, again, with Morgan, we, Morgan, she gave me so much um, knowledge. Um, so basically the rainfall was quite low in 2011 and rainfall uh, in general, you wanna have some rainfall, but not too much. And um, a little drier actually is usually a little bit better actually for the, the grape varietals. Um, they don't mind that a little bit. Um, the Merlot needs a little bit more water. The Cab needs less water. So it was um, quite a good year. And um, they said it was the driest spring since 1949. So I think that would be quite good um, for the um, blend that Obreon has. And I will have the blend um, they have, it's usually Cabernet dominant and I will have the blend um, in, of 2011 in the notes to this um, video. So here is the wine. I don't have the cork, unfortunately. This is the 2007, sorry, 2011 Aubryon Grand Cru Classé 2011. Not much on the back of this. I do not have the cork, unfortunately. Uh, color of the wine, a little bit of uh, slight discoloration, uh, but still good color. Um, it does show some aging, so I would probably drink this within the next, I would say, uh, five to eight years. I would say that's it would start hitting its drinking window and then go on for the next 15, 20 years, I would say. So let's taste the wine, and I will let you know that I... This is the second uh, day after we've opened it last night. We had it with steak. Um, we also paired it. We had another a couple of other wines. We had it with the 2003 Mouton, which seemed a bit fleshier, quite frankly, and more ready to drink. Um, we didn't decant them for very long, so we only had probably an hour, an hour a bit. Um, and then we drank for about a couple of hours, three hours. So at the end of the night, it was starting to come around. It was funny because um, 03 Mouton is seen as a great vintage, but it seemed to taste or open up quicker than this wine. This wine seemed to be a little more reserved. And again, um, this is about tasting experience and personal experience with the wines. If you just look at the book 
and you look at people's ratings, you say, well, 2011, 2003, 2003 is a stronger wine. Of course, it's going to be more tannic and um, it's going to be more robust or whatever. Um, but that wasn't the case. The Surprisingly, it was tasting quite mellow. It, it was re more ready to drink at dinner than the 2011. The 11 was a little tight, quite frankly. Um, and as it aired more and more, it became a little bit uh, more fragrant and a little bit more um, compelling a wine. So um, I'm really interested now, after a day, how it um, is evolving. Yeah, so it's totally different wine than when I first tasted it last night. Last night, it was very tannic, didn't give off a lot of um, aroma, um, not a lot of charm, quite frankly, and didn't taste a lot or smell like a, an Aubryon in terms of the charm and the finesse. Now, after a day, it's much more charming, um, much more fruit forward, um, I smell almost like um, plums and haw flakes. Um, I don't know if it's a Chinese kind of medicinal thing. When you get Chinese medicine, you get these plum flakes. They're called haw flakes. Um, I get like foresty, like almost like a, not like the forest floor, but forest branches almost, like dried branches. A little bit of woodiness on this. Yeah, I get that um, foresty type um, when you're walking in the forest um, and like dry branches, um, that kind of smell to it. Um, even maybe like an old um, oak chest, um, that type of smell to this. Uh, much more in line with Aubryon, almost a little exotic on the smell. Of course, there's plums and there's black fruit, um, but much more charming than last night, uh, which, where it was quite tight and almost, yeah, it didn't smell a lot. It, it didn't have the earthiness and the minerality I would expect from an Aubryon. This is much more in line with what I would think uh, Aubryon uh, kind of smells like. Again, huge difference from last night. Um, much, much more balanced, a lot of good acidity, a lot of salivation in my mouth right now, dark fruit, really showing out right now, very clear in terms of the fruit presence. Last night, it was kind of muddled. Um, so it really, uh, it's surprising because you think 11 is not a good vintage but it does need that time. Um, that's just my experience. Maybe it needs a little bit more age on this. Um, on the aftertaste, a little bit of tobacco, and then the, the branches again, the foresty um, branches. But again, it's a huge, I would say, um, if you just had the wine, you decanted it for a couple hours and you drank it, you'd be very disappointed with this wine. Um, and you say, oh, 2011 is a terrible vintage. That would kind of perpetuate that um, stereotype. But now that I've had it opened and I was fortunate to drink with Morgan who kind of told me the same thing. She goes, this wine, just wait. It's gonna evolve a little bit better. And we continue to wait and it got better. It's like, you see the balance? And so it was really useful to have someone that um, has that experience with the wine to say, no, don't worry, it's gonna come around. Um, this is not the end of end all and be all of the wine. So now it's really, I think it's still quite young. I would say 2011, even though I really like it as a drinking vintage, I think we'll think this wine's ready. Um, I'd give it another five years or eight years. Uh, and then when you decant it for a couple hours, then it'd be probably like this, this level. This is lovely right now. Way different. I would say 
60 or 80 percent better than I had last night. Um, if you had it again, if you had it last night, you would be disappointed with this wine. You're saying, "Well, it's, how come this is all brillant?" Now you understand this wine. Oh, this tastes and smells like Aubryon, very much so. I wouldn't say this is my favorite vintage of Aubryon. So my score of this is gonna be 93 points. Uh, I've had better Aubryon, but it does have the balance it's silky it's great i'm not sure it's quite ready yet so it could improve still the aftertaste is a little bit um a little bit bitter almost for my taste and that could be just it's young um so it's not as balanced as i'd like for opion and i don't see as much of the um classic earthiness that I would associate, graveliness, earthiness that I would associate with opium. I don't see that as um, prevalent. Now in my second taste, I'm tasting a little bit of slight chocolate um, um, aftertaste, but not as prevalent and not as easy to um, distinguish as in other opions as compared to my previous tasting of the 2000 opion. I thought that was um, a little bit uh better in terms of currently uh that one was fully mature this one i think is not quite there yet and so again it's fairly young um maybe it's just not quite there yet but on honestly it's always a blessing and a privilege to drink um Aubryon, particularly when i had an opportunity to to drink with um, one of the um, wine people and then again I encourage you when you have a chance uh, when um, particularly um, people from the winery come visit your um, place your city and have wine dinners really take advantage and really listen intently with them drink with them they're the experts um, they're from the winery. They drink hundreds of this, these bottles. They know how to prepare them. They've seen every variation of how people prepare them. So it's really important to um, kind of uh, get their knowledge from them because they're, they're experts in their field in that wine. And um, particularly if they come to, from the winery, um, they know so much about the ins and outs of the wines. They can tell you so many details um, that books just can't tell you. Uh, so it's so instrumental. It's so valuable. And so when you have that opportunity, please take that opportunity. The other thing I will say with these wine visits or when wineries uh, reps come out, you actually really get a sense of that winery. When they choose, uh, whether it be ambassadors or managers, um, that reflects on the whole philosophy of the winery. And I get a lot um, of the philosophy of the winery by who they choose. Um, and generally speaking, that is very much in line with the wine. So Aubryon is a very, very established winery, um, established label. If you ever get a chance to meet Morgan in North America, you'll find that she's a spectacular ambassador for the wine and very much in line with the principles of the wine and that's what i find with lots of wineries um good and bad some of them um it's true that their their ambassadors who they choose will be a reflection of their winery and the philosophy of the winery and uh, i take a lot from that um if they're for example i won't name the winery but um, you know, if the winery is not knowledgeable or doesn't care about the wine, you can tell. And likewise, if the winery is uh, not comfortable with certain parts of the market uh, or doesn't respect certain types of um, certain parts of the wine market or the wine industry, you can tell. And uh, 
that comes out quite quite clearly um, after you meet a lot of these um, wineries. So I mean that that's a side note. Um, hope you've enjoyed this tasting. Until next time, happy drinking.